Hi, and welcome to the Videos for Change Summit screening. I'm Amandi, and I'll be your host for this event. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the Bunarong people, who are the traditional owners on the land on which I am filming today. I'd also like to acknowledge Casey's Aboriginal communities, their rich culture, and pay respect to their elders past, present, and future. We recognize Aboriginal people as Australia's first peoples and as the custodians on the land on which we work and live. As a young person living in the city of Casey, I am pleased to be introduced in today's event. For those of you who may not know, Videos for Change empowers high school students to create one minute videos to raise awareness and inspire change on social issues that they are passionate about. In 2020, we asked the question, what does community mean in a crisis? Today's film festival is an opportunity to celebrate the creativity and amplify the impact of the 2020 competition finalists. Stay tuned to celebrate the finalists from the junior, senior and people's choice categories. Our very own Victorian finalists come from Frankston High School with their film, Chill Out and Look About, and from Goulburn Valley Grammar School with their film, Reach Out. These videos feature a range of topics and issues, from moving pieces about the importance of road safety, to films that explore the impact of reaching out to people during isolation. But the one thing they all have in common? They inspire change. We are excited to be able to share this online film festival with you today, and we look forward to bringing this event live and in person to Bunjil Place next year. In 2021, we'll be ramping up this event with videos being featured online as well as on the outdoor screen at Bunjil Place. We'll also be showing exclusive Victorian entries, so don't miss out. Make sure you're following our socials for more info on this next year. If you or someone you know would be interested in submitting a film in 2021, make sure you check out the Videos for Change website. To get in touch, feel free to email the Bunjil Place Plaza team or High Resolves via the links on the screen. Also, are you a young person that's into music? Art? Do you have an interest in running events? Then you should check out Casey's Freezer Committee. More info on this can be found on Casey's website under the Youth Services page. Now, let's get this show started! change the world? Of course. Yes. Yeah, we can. Who says we can't? We are the next generation and we need to make changes. Young people are as capable as anyone else. Young people can do anything they put their mind to. We are the next generation and we need people to make changes. Young people need to change the world. This is a world that us, our children and our grandchildren will live in. Young people can do anything they put their mind to. Anyone can. We all have ideas we can share to our society to help us grow, strengthen and develop. Share these around and make our world a better place. Hi and welcome to the 2020 Australian Videos for Change Film Festival. We're your hosts, Brandon and Alana. Now this year's festival looks a little bit different. We're trapped inside a computer! Yeah, we are. We're actually filming a virtual film festival this year and you're all tuning in from different parts of Australia and we think it's really important to acknowledge whose lens we're tuning in from. We're going to hear now from our friend Jadalyn. I would like to begin by acknowledging and paying my respects to the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and pay my respects to all of their elders past, present and their young fellas emerging. I'd like to acknowledge um, and extend that respect to all the families of the Kulin Nation and acknowledge um, the families as, as the traditional custodians 
of this sacred place. I pay my respects and acknowledge all First Nations people, both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people of this country where I live, work and learn. I pay my respects to all the old people of yesterday, the elders of today, and the leaders, the emerging leaders of tomorrow. I recognise the governing laws, customs, community and creation spirits that govern this place before time itself. I recognise this place has always been a place of teaching and learning, a place of growing and becoming, a place of sharing, healing and truth telling. My name is Jadalyn. I'm a proud Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander woman from Central Cape York. Um, specifically, I'm Southern Kanju and Kalkali, currently living, working and studying on the lands of the Kulin Nation. Um, I'm very excited to um, be afforded the opportunity to do an acknowledgement today and acknowledge all of our history um, on this place. Um, I would just like to acknowledge um, that we are a strong and resilient people and extend that to our young people as well um, who are coming up through the ranks, um, myself included. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity today and to all our young fellows, um, our young mob who have um, contributed today in, in whatever means, um, congratulations and save this moment. Um, you, are the, you are the leaders of tomorrow um, and it's very exciting to see. Thank you so much and um, enjoy your week. Thank you for that wonderful acknowledgement of country. This has been an extraordinary year. We've seen everything from bushfires, droughts, floods and even a global pandemic. The Videos for Change competition is an opportunity for young people to amplify their voice and take positive action on social issues that are important to them. That's right, Lara, and that's why this year we introduced the theme, what does community mean in a crisis? And we saw so many different responses to that question. Now, Alana, this year's competition has been bigger and better than ever before. How big? This big? No, like, like this Whoa. big! <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of people have watched the videos for change entries this year. We've actually had double the amount of shares on social media than wow, last that's year. Awesome. And it's reached 60 countries. Wait, there are 60 countries? There are more than that. Wow. Well, socials have been going crazy this year. We've had four times the amount of votes for our People's Choice Award. So you've got to stay tuned right till the end to find out who the winner is. And throughout the festival, we're also going to be announcing the winners of the junior and senior categories. Today is about celebrating the work of young people all around Australia who have participated in the Videos for Change competition. Hi, I'm Kerry from Videos for Change. I was one of the judges in this year's competition. I actually got to watch all of this year's entries. There were hundreds of them, and it was really difficult to choose which ones would become finalists. Being a judge is actually pretty tough. The thing is, I don't get to just choose the ones I like best either. We actually have a really strict set of criteria to ensure that it's fair for everyone. The first criteria, is whether the issue was communicated effectively. You might say we ask, was it clear? Do we know what this group of young people actually really care about? But also was the issue handled respectfully? Did it avoid stereotypes? And was it relevant and accessible for the audience to understand what it was about? The second criteria is emotional impact. We want to consider whether the video creates an emotional connection. Does it draw your attention to a surprising or even shocking fact? And does that video have a really lasting emotional impact? Does it really make me care about that issue when I watch it? The third criteria is whether the video is unique or creative in some way. Does the video leave a really lasting impression because 
something really memorable happened, something unexpected that we haven't seen before. Unique and creative videos are sometimes really resourceful with props they've used or even the way they've filmed or created or used different techniques in their video. These videos really stand out. The fourth criteria is effective use of video making techniques. Are there any technical issues that affect the impact of the video, like maybe sound or lighting? Does the sound or the way the video has been shot actually amplify the emotion, enhance the meaning of the video? And we also look to see that the amount of text shown in the video doesn't make it too difficult for the audience to follow along. And the fifth criteria is a clear and achievable call to action. Does the video clearly communicate how your actions, the audience's actions, can actually make a positive difference? Is that call to action achievable and relevant to the people who might be watching the video? Do we really know how those actions can make a difference? And is that call to action unifying? Does it bring people together? If you've downloaded the Film Festival Judging Sheet, you can actually be the judge today. Give each video a score in each of the criteria from one to five. You'll need to score as you go though, because there isn't much time between each video. At the end, add them up, and see who you end up with as your winner. Enjoy the festival today. I'm gonna to throw back to Brandon and Alana to get things moving. Now remember to score the videos as you go. The uh, videos are in alphabetical order with junior on the front and senior on the back. Now Brandon, just as a reminder, although all of these videos are rated G, some of them have some serious issues and some confronting themes. It's really important that you debrief with a friend after watching these videos and if any of these videos affect you or you find yourself affected, make sure that you talk to a teacher or a trusted adult. Is it time to watch the finalists? It sure is, Alana. So make sure that you sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Can I have some? COVID. I feel worthless, helpless, and no matter what I do, I'll never be enough. I feel lonely and I miss everyone too much. I don't deserve to be here. Hey Jamie, our cousins are on Zoom. Do you want to come talk? COVID isolation, calling a family member or friend can help them get through this tough time. Everyone needs a friend, so be that friend for someone else. You never know how much someone is struggling. I feel worthy. If you are ever in need, call Lifeline at 13 11 14.
especially from the back of the auditorium where the parents were sitting. Excellent reading. Thank you, Mia. It's your turn now, Anna. I, uh, I, I licked Mr. Sh Shushman's uh, sheep. <sighs> I can't! Anna, you failed English again. What's wrong with you? You can't even do a stupid spelling test. Why can't you be like everyone else? Just one sig. It won't hurt anyone. I got other things to worry about. It's one piece. It can't do much. It's one cough. I'm not sick. I don't need a mask. It won't get recycled anyway. One piece is okay. It's not my responsibility. One piece is only one. Once. Only once. It's alright. We'll be fine. Once. Nothing happens. Once. Once. It's once. just once. It's just, it's just once. once. When active neglect multiplies, consider our world. Action. Welcome. Alana, that's exactly what the students at 1 times 7 billion were trying to communicate to us. This really shows us the impact of collective actions. So based on the call to action, what are you going to do? Put it in the bin. Yes. But Brandon, can we talk about the video Love Yourself? We can. I'll be honest, when I was in high school, I didn't wear makeup very often. I thought mascara was a bit of a weapon. But I did sometimes feel self-conscious, and even sometimes now as an adult, I feel self-conscious. You know, when you're filming for a film festival? Mm -hmm. But it was such a good message to remind yourself, love yourself no matter what. Yeah, and I really felt the emotional impact of I Feel Lonely. And people all around Australia have been feeling the effects of not being able to see loved ones because of borders being closed and things like that. And even my sister got married and I couldn't make it and attend in person. So luckily I was able to attend via Zoom. And the film Dyslexia, that had such a clear message. I had no idea that one in five people had dyslexia and the impact it has on people's lives. It was so awesome to see that as a topic at this year's competition. Absolutely. So we're going to check out the next four videos now, so make sure that you get your score sheets out. So stupid. I hate life. What's even the point? Nobody else needs to know. Clumsy.
cozy as hell. He hates me now. In March this year, one of our friends and classmates, Dylan Briggs, was tragically hit by a car while riding home from school and died a few days later. This occurred just as COVID-19 was impacting Australia, and as a result, no memorial service for his family and friends was able to be held. This tragedy hit our community hard. To lose a friend and a student is something no one should have to deal with, but this crisis has united our community to raise the important issue of road safety. Together with Dylan's family, we have created the Chill Out and Look About initiative. This initiative includes a video sharing Dylan's story, which has been shared all over the world. We also have a website with resources for students and teachers, as well as working with local MPs to change the speed limit where the accident occurred. We wouldn't have been able to create this initiative without the support and encouragement of Dylan's community. Our key message is no matter who you are, a cyclist, a driver or a pedestrian, make sure you chill out and look about when on the roads. Brandon, the video doors were such an epic. The tension, the music, the doors. I really think we have a future Christopher Nolan on our hands. That film was unique and creative. We sure do, Alana, but compare that to Chill Out and Look About. A different tone, but this was obviously a tragedy, and, and one where a community has come together to show us that we really can act in a positive way to a crisis. Now, think about that call to action, Chill Out and Look About. This could literally save lives. Now our thoughts with Dylan's friends and family. The film Not Your Crisis ticked all the boxes for me. It was authentic, it was personal, and I really loved hearing the internal monologue of that main character. It made me take their perspective. True, and think about our mental health and aged care homes. I mean, this one really resonated with me and made me think about my grandparents. You know, when they struggled with their mental health, what they did is go and play croquet. Brandon, what's croquet? See this picture here. Now, I really loved the calls to action that were sprinkled throughout the video. Brandon, after the film fest, do you want to play some croquet? Yes! Well, for people who have dyslexia, we want them to know that they are like thought of and they are cared for and that, that it's okay to have dyslexia and that it's common for people and they shouldn't feel ashamed for themselves. Because yeah. they have it. And for people that don't have it and are in the classrooms with people to be more conscious of people who do have it and not to judge people mm. and just be respectful to others. Well, it's a great way to like 
spread not only in Australia but globally. The reason we started our dyslexia video was just look, looking at videos, the Videos for Change website and we got really inspired by the equality, the cyberbullying video and it really like motivated us to make another video, not something like that had done previously but something different. Yeah, that's why we chose dyslexia because we knew that many people haven't done a topic based on that. And it's very common, so we were like, you know what, we'll do a dyslexia video yeah. and <laughs> there we go. So it's really hard for teenagers our age to create change because we live in an adult world where our voice is harder to be heard. So creating change, videos for change is amazing because it gives us an opportunity for our voices to be heard in such a big world. Because for me personally, I'm still struggle with the body image and as an international student, I kind of have to meet my cultural standard and Australian standard. So, but also during doing this project and after, I have a, like a better understanding about how I should treat myself and how other people should starting to treat themselves. Probably the biggest lesson is that social media is a very powerful platform and lots of people use it in many different ways, but if we all work together, we can create positive change to overpower the negative ones. Our group is passionate about this issue because we feel that this coronavirus pandemic, in, this, in these times of crisis, it is critical to stay together as a community and act as a community and not just in one's own best interests and to protect the community as a whole, even, that, even if that means putting yourself in a different position than you are normally used to. Uh, when creating our video, we wanted to grasp the concept of integrity during the pandemic and how important it is, especially in these times. Uh, using integrity in the pandemic means uh, doing the right thing even when no one's watching. So that means always following the guidelines, uh, uh, watching the restrictions, making sure that you're following them all, even when nobody's around you, just in case so you don't spread the virus. We believe that young people are just as capable as adults in changing the world. We know about our own lives and all the things that are happening around us. We are a part of them. Videos for Change is a funnel for that knowledge and to give people an understanding that we know about these current topics and that we should be considered and that we can change the world. To find out the winner of the junior category, we're going to hand over to a senior executive of the Nine Network, Adrian Swift. Then we'll hear from the founder of Videos for Change, Roy Bagai, who's going to interview the winner of the junior category. Oh, so exciting. Yes! Alright, over to you Adrian. And the winner of the junior high category is I Wish I Was Like Her from Dubbo College, Delroy Campus. Congratulations. me feel. I bet my double chin looks horrible in that photo. Everyone probably thinks I'm really ugly. the winner of this year's Australian Videos for Change. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow! <laughs> so how does it feel? That's great! <laughs> Congratulations! Congratulations! I uh, just really, really loved your video. I just thought it was just such a beautiful way to create empathy for you know, all of these insecurities that many of us carry in ourselves of, 
you know, just thinking that we're not good enough and yet those things that we're most insecure about are the very things that people often admire the most. So well done. I think your video was Thank absolutely you so outstanding. Much. What, was the, what was the main reason you chose to make a video on this topic? Um, probably the fact that I know a lot of teenagers go through similar issues to what I made my video on. And so hopefully impacting people to know where they can get help and that other people feel like that as well. And what was, when you were making this video, what was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome? Um, probably the actual filming. It was a bit hard to like keep a straight face. And yeah. And what gave you the idea to, to film it from different people's perspectives? Um, I feel like every, just to show that everyone does go through similar things. And what did you enjoy the most? Um, probably seeing the end product. Like it was a lot of effort to put into it and it was nice to see the end product. And what, what was the reaction that you got from your friends and family when you made the video and when you Yeah, they loved it. I thought it was pretty good. What would you say to other young people who are thinking of making a video for change? Um, definitely do it. It's a great experience and you get so much out of it. Congratulations, Matilda, for being the winner of the junior category. We're now going to watch the videos from the senior category. To judge these videos, make sure to swap over your judging sheet. As a reminder, some of these videos contain confronting themes. When people think of community in crisis, the first thing that come to mind are coronavirus and bushfires. But what is incredibly overlooked in society is the internal crises that unknowingly affect one in five Australians each year. My name is Maddie Mossel, and this is my story of struggling with anxiety, depression, and at one point in my life, suicidal thoughts. It took me a long time to acknowledge that these thoughts and feelings weren't normal. But when I had the courage to open up to my community, everything became easier. My friends and family have always been incredibly supportive of me. They made sure I was getting the help I needed and made sure I felt safe. They also led me to therapy, which has been a crucial part in my recovery. They gave me professional advice and they were very understanding, which made me feel less isolated. I now hope to be an advocate for destigmatizing mental illness, as my community quite literally saved my life and they can save yours too. I got fired. During COVID lockdown, you're isolated with someone you trust. But what if they take advantage of that lockdown? Verbal abuse. Psychological abuse. Physical abuse. These are just some of the ways a person can be abused. Me and Daddy are hitting again. Mummy said that's their playtime. I have to go outside and play. Sometimes I sneak and look at their games, but it doesn't look fun. It's scary. He's angry at me and never wants to play anymore. I help mum a lot to get ready. We put makeup on her before work to cover up the mark. I really don't think it's a game. Maybe it's my fault. I stay in my room now. It's gotten worse. I want to help mum so bad, but I'm scared. Dad left us last night. Maybe things will be better now. 
Mum cries in her room all day. She's always angry at me. I don't really want to talk about it. I wish I could help her be happy. Let Me In had such a strong emotional impact on me. I thought Maddie was incredibly brave sharing her story. I also liked how in her video, as well as so many others we've seen today, there was a link to a website that viewers could go to if they needed support. If you want to rewatch any of the videos you've seen today, please visit australia.videosforchange.org. When I watched Breaking the Silence, it gave me goosebumps. It highlighted how family violence is still such an important issue. The way that they used creativity of the sound design and animation to bring the message home was really great, I thought. Speaking of creativity, using a picture on the fridge for the My Family video was such an effective way to tell the audience this film was set in a family. I also thought the script was incredibly moving. In fact, I heard someone from Network 9 said it was a brilliant piece of screenwriting. Therefore, as of 12 o'clock tonight, we will be in a state of lockdown. Hello, my name is Anthony, spelt A-N-T, and this is a short motivational video like the ones you see on YouTube. What does our colony mean when we face a crisis? Ants. Ants just like you, we encounter crises, like waging war. Mind you, on a much smaller, antier scale. Weather crisis. Floods. Climate change. Fires. Dangerous viral outbreaks. <coughs> and the most damaging, midlife crisis. We face many conflicts as a community, but it is how we combat and overcome those threats that defines us as a colony of ants. And in your case, a collection of strange bipedal giants. The filmmaker of It Only Takes One told us the reason they made this film was to make sure that people ask these questions in a genuine and authentic way. 
and actually listen to the answer. I really felt the emotional impact when everyone came around each other and showed their support. A Zoetic Coterie is a film I'm going to be quoting for months. A-N-T-O. I mean. Apparently the motivation for this filmmaker was to make people laugh. Success, Brandon. The ant had a midlife crisis. Crazy. I really enjoyed seeing the different ways and motivations that people have approached this idea of what does community mean in a crisis. Reach Out did this in, yet again, a new way. I think in 50 years, this would be a great one to show the grandkids. Who knew that animated tears could make me cry? You don't know my story really tugged at my heartstrings. It calls for us to not just assume or make judgments about people. Substance abuse was another video that had a high emotional impact on me. I thought the use of makeup was brilliant. Also, the topic of substance abuse and the impact it has on children is something that's not often discussed. The idea that Videos for Change gives young people an opportunity to share their voice on issues that are important to them is awesome mental health. As a man, this is a really important issue for me. I love that this video destigmatizes uh, men not only sharing their feelings, but also supporting each other when they do. I think this is a message that everyone needs to hear.
I chose homelessness for my videos for change topic because I think it's something that I'm really passionate about. All throughout the community and online, almost every day, you'll see people suffering from homelessness. And I think each of them all have their own individual stories, just like every other one of us. So I think Videos for Change was a really good platform to make a video that was entertaining and emotive and informative all at the same time that could help spread awareness to this issue. What have you learned through the Videos for Change challenge? Well, I think it's sort of, did, did you know that you could make a video like this? Because I didn't. I just sort of went, oh, making a video, you know, we're probably not going to do a very good job at this. But <laughs> yeah, I'm actually- Yeah, the experience of making short films. Yeah, but I'm actually pretty proud of what we've done. You know, I guess we really want like what we can do if we put our minds to stuff yeah. and try our hardest. You because know? we did it a little bit over a month of yeah. like planning and filming. And then on the day, it just all sort of came together, Belgium, yeah. And nice. like now, it's now that the voting has started, it's gone so many places. <laughs> it's just in Switzerland. Yeah, just every day we hear something new about, you know, yeah. new people who have voted for it or someone who shared it. And it just, it just blows my mind. I'm like, it's what crazy. now? Because we were on the radio for, we were on Max FM radio to promote it more yeah and it's being shared by the ambassador for are you okay it's just going places yeah so i guess it's people. been sort of a, a self-esteem boost really <laughs> because you know we, up our own mental health yeah <laughs> we know because now we know we can do these things if we really try and i guess that's the whole point of videos for change you know yeah. changing the world one video at a time <laughs> One in seven Australian men will experience depression or anxiety at some point during their lifetime. Every day in Australia, every single day, six men take their own lives. Men are three times more likely to die by suicide than women. But it doesn't have to be this way. By creating and sharing our video, we hope to raise awareness and start a conversation around the importance of men's mental health. Be there for yourself. Wow, it must have been really tough for the judges to pick a winner. So let's throw that Adrian to hear who it is. And the winner of the senior high category is Eggshells from Mount St. Joseph's High in Milpera. Congratulations. Danielle, you are yeah. actually the winner of this year's Australian Videos of Change Senior Award. Congratulations. Thank you. I was not expecting that. Wow, okay. How does it feel? I'm kind of like, I'm just thinking about like for me, like this started, I was just handing in a photography assignment and now I'm here and I'm like, oh, okay, that happened. So take me back to what made you think about um, making a video on a subject that is so confronting like domestic abuse. Um, I learned a lot about domestic abuse while I was making it. Sorry, side tangent. Um, I read statistics and like statistics are true. Like statistics don't reach you emotionally to a degree. But while reading the survivor stories, like I learned understood and they were all like young, impressionable, pe impressionable people. They, they found someone who like gave them a sense of self-worth 
And, like, the closer they got, like, they didn't realise, like, the more they were going into the cave, the more dangerous it was becoming, the more dark it was. And I saw something on Instagram as well where it says, you don't just walk into abuse because the person obviously isn't going to be horrible straight away. You stay away from horrible people, but you can't stay away from people who are manipulative. And just going along those lines. So I kind of earned more empathy towards those survival stories. Do you mm-hmm. think it's important for young people to have a voice in these issues? What do you think young people can contribute? I think the best thing that young people can do to contribute is to show unity against something. Because the more like the more you bring awareness to it, I feel like unity is just really good because it helps bring a sense of community. And it's just like such a strong force against loneliness and like all these problems that happen because like someone feels like by themselves and just like so desolate. And yeah, just to show that there's like someone out there for you. We've got an incredibly exciting announcement coming up from a very special person. Can't wait. We both feel so privileged to have seen so many great videos today. But stick around, we've got one more important award to announce. But before we get to that, have you been wondering why the awards have been announced by Adrian at the Nine Network? Why? Because there's going to be some great media coverage over the coming days. So, look out for it. We invite you to become part of the growing global community of change makers, amplifying their message to videos for change. In 2021, we are having a global Videos for Change competition and you're all invited to enter. So follow us on our socials and keep an eye out on our website for more details to come. So, same time next year, Brandon? There's still one to go. The, the People's, People's Choice Award. Award! 
Thanks to all this year's entrants and all those who have voted. And congratulations again to all the finalists and the winners. The moment we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna go microwave some more popcorn. Two serves! All right. And the winner of the People's Choice Award is Mental Health and Aged Care Homes created by students from Mount Gravett State High School in Queensland. Yay! Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, the girls that came. Oh, I'm Kyrie. Hey, I'm Brown. And we're all from Mount Gravatt State High School in Brisbane, Queensland. Are uh, actually the winners of the People's <laughs> Choice Award. Yes! <laughs> this, this is the People's Choice Award. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah. So, tell me, how does it feel? Great, really good. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. It really was such a beautiful video. As I said, I think it just was so genuine, so authentic. And having read some of the feedback from um, the, the people in the, the home that you visited, it just really seemed like you really touched their lives. And what I love particularly was that you really just gave such clear ways for people to be able to help in this very unusual time that we've had this year. So huge congratulations. What was the main reason that you chose to create a video on this topic? Well, with mental health, we see at school, if you have bad mental health, how badly it affects all factors of your life. And we, and we knew with coronavirus, your mental health would suffer. But we thought with elderly people, they quite often go unheard. What do you think was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome when you were making the video? Uh, the biggest challenge was getting everything organized and doing everything safely while obeying COVID rules. Like on the video, we were talking to them outside the walls. What was the most valuable thing that you have taken away uh, from making this video or the whole videos for change experience what i found the most valuable was um not only was it a fun experience but um we were really grateful for it because we had actually made a difference and it made us feel good that we had done something for our community it's a really good feeling knowing that you helped someone even if you only gave them like a, like a little or something like the little things count sort of getting prepared for the visit I didn't really understand how much value like the elderly people would take into it. Like I didn't think they would, it would affect them as much as it did. So that was quite good. I've seen some of the feedback from the people uh, who've seen the video. Like what was it like when you shared your video uh, with your friends and family or at the school? Um, well, I know my parents, some of them like cried when they saw it and they thought it was really nice. Yeah, I have to confess I did too. <laughs> <laughs>